slow and so fast The second hand spinning like a sky Fly you have trailblazed Made the world a better place Strong and bright Like the 4th of July You have trailblazed Made the world a better place Strong and bright like the 4th of July. Oh, lovely. I bet he loved that, didn't he? Thank you. Yeah, he cried a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I yes. bet. Got oh. him. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Very good. I love that. Thank you. So, um, have you guys been to 3rd and Johnson yet? No. It is a, guess where it is? 3rd and Johnson? Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> And they have um, such wonderful food. They have a lot of vegan choices, keto choices. Um, he makes soup. He made really delicious soups all winter, and he still has them, but it'll probably stop when it gets warm. All from scratch. And one of my favorite things that he does, uh, his name is Paul, is he um, does meals. He calls them take and bakes. So he has everything all ready to go, and then you take it home and put it in the oven. Well, you wouldn't want to put your salad in the oven. But everything else, like you could order it for two, for three, whatever, and you, then you take it home and bake it and eat it. And so you have, like, a really good homemade meal that you didn't have to make. Yeah, I'm glad that you're, <laughs> that you're plugging this because I forget that they're there. And we've talked about how sad we were when Heather's closed down. Right. Vegan He's option. A, um, yeah, so that's really a and good he, reminder. And he has now, he's expanding a little bit, and he has farm-fresh eggs. He has um, hormone-free chicken. Uh, and I just had some breasts in the freezer, and I made those really, really good. It's really good. And um, pretty soon the farmers will start bringing things. It's a farm-to-table kind of place. Awesome. So, and he has herbs growing, like basil in pots. And just, it's such a cool place when you go in there. And and uh, so many different choices. It's wonderful. And sprouts. You know, when I was in California, you could get sprouts everywhere. Here, they're really hard to find. Oh, that's true. And I love sprouts on an avocado and cucumber sandwich. Mm-hmm. That is so delicious. And, it, and he has not just one kind, but several kinds. So make sure that you go there. Um, check it out because, oh, and, you know, if you are vegan and he has some really good flowers, too. And if you're gluten free, he has some really good flowers. I always get my flour there and my pasta. Really wide variety and excellent Excellent food. And he makes croissants in the morning, so it smells so good. He bakes quiche. I've heard a lot of good things about that mm-hmm. place, for sure. And he also community. caters, yeah. Yep. he. Mm, it's really good. He makes a smoked white fish dip that, wow. for us, when we have things, and it's just splendid. It's always gone. It doesn't matter if five people are here or 20. It's, Deb, I'm so it's hungry gone. right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I should have gotten something from Third and Johnson. <laughs> so he's our sponsor of the week. Please go see him. His name is Paul. The menu is on his Facebook page, but it's also on ours, but you might have to look a little bit on ours. It's 1023 North Johnson Street here in Bay City. The number is 989-971-1456. And tell him that the Divas sent you. Maybe he'll give you like a free cup of coffee or something. I'm just saying, he might. He might. So um, if you're just joining us tonight, we're here in the studio with three lovely female musicians that are singer-songwriters. And our next one that we're going to talk to this evening is Lori Spear of Lori and the Lefties. <laughs> and she's fun, and I can't wait to play your music on the station, too. That'll be really fun, too. Awesome. Thank you. So, um, Lori. Yes. You told us that where you got your start was from a guitar that was in the closet. Okay. And so you've been playing music for a long time. Yeah. So how old were you when you had your first band? And where do you go now and where do you play and what drives you to keep doing this? Well, I'm too old to quit now. (laughs) (laughs) My first gig, um, I was 19 or 20. And the only reason I know that is because I wasn't old enough to drink uh, Ah. in the bar that I was playing at. 
So, uh, so I brought some Jack Daniels in my purse, <laughs> and, and I drank it because I was so nervous. And then I went in the bathroom and threw up. Aww. And then I played. And then I played. <laughs> so uh, to me, it's, life is a challenge. So um, I. I just figure why quit now. I you you get better as you go, you know. And I I'm not I'm not a, an accomplished musician. I pretty much play for myself. I write songs, um, really personal songs, but then I twist them so that um, they're a lie that's almost true. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> to make it more yeah, interesting. Yeah. So that's art. What is that called? I art. Don't, I don't know. It's called lazy to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just uh, I just love it, you know. And uh, I don't. Uh, I have grandkids, uh, a grandson now, and another one on the way. And so uh, I like to uh, entertain them more. Than, I, I mean, I entertain audiences. We just played up in Escanaba at the casino three nights in a row and five sets. So it was long. Oh, I mean, we... we that's I, a lot of work. Yeah. So I have a five-piece band, and we play all over the state, actually. But but for me, uh, the music is just more for... Uh, so I can... Uh, it's kind of a habit or an outlet or... A, I think somebody said it was an out... It's it's a it's a hobby that turned into a habit, and I refuse to quit. <laughs> so that's my excuse. Artistic license, it's called. Okay, I knew I'd think of it. That Rolodex just had to roll around. So that's kind of fun because it's it's kind of true, but kind of not. Right, right. We and it's up to us to guess which part's true. Exactly, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I love it. So what are you going to play for us this evening? Well. Um, we probably only have time for one, right? So I should pick a good one. <laughs> um, I think we have time for another one each. Okay. Well, uh, when I was a kid, um, my mother and uh, my parents got divorced, and my mother moved us to Oklahoma. And I wrote a song about my step grandmother. There you go. Um, her name was Rosie McIntyre, and she lived in Ada, Oklahoma. And uh, she was a, a older Cherokee woman. And so when I was looking for a character for this song, I chose her. In the small town of Ada, Oklahoma, there lived a very old woman named Rosie McIntyre. And I could hear her out there grumbling and humming As she ripped and tore the weeds out of her yard Well, there wasn't much for an eight-year-old to do at the time I just climbed up in the tree to watch her work sure if she was cussing or praying as she pushed that shovel deep into the earth so throw a little bit of dirt on it cause all living things come from the earth you know Cause it all comes down to the soil Now Rosie didn't mind If I followed her around Cause I helped her with the buckets and things And her long gray hair was tied up Her hands were worn and scarred Hundred and ten percent Cherokee. And oh, she prayed for rain as she wiped the red dust from her brow. And I still see her now every time that I look up. See dark clouds It was the spring of 67 And that big storm came through Said that five tornadoes touched the ground And we all ran down to the cellar 
when the warning whistle blew Rosie McIntyre was never found So throw a little bit of dirt on it Cause all living things come from the earth, you know Just throw a little bit of dirt on it Cause it all comes down to the soil It all comes down to the soil It all comes down to the ground Really good. That Thank was you. really fun. Thanks. I love that. Very good. Hmm. So was she cussing or praying? She was cussing. <laughs> I can tell you that. <clears throat> I can believe it. Yes. That was very cute. I love that song. Good, good, good. So, um, you know, do you remember, you guys might be too young, remember that um, Coke commercial when they... They, it was a bunch of different singers, and they were singing, I'd like to buy the world a Coke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I saw that, I, I got goosebumps for the first time because, to me, it's what Sarah said. That, that You wouldn't have to know what those people were singing, mm-hmm. but you would feel good listening to that. It didn't have to be about Coke. But the looks on their faces and the way they were interacting, and to me, that's what music is. And it doesn't really matter what kind of music it is either, does it? Doesn't it? Yeah, I think music is, it's like the great unifier. And there's some really cool studies that are that show that people in concert halls, they've done like the EKGs and the, they put the... The monitors on them, and they find that people's brain waves are actually in sync with the beat and each other. It oh, syncs that's up people's so cool. brains. It connects us. It's just, it's pretty magical. I used to go to a lot of concerts. Mm-hmm. So I'm part of a, a group, uh, AMP. It's All Music is Power. Oh, I love that. And uh, we go around to schools. Donnie Brown and um, uh, Mark Lyons own, or not own it, but started this program. And I'm just a helper on it. But um, we go around to special ed schools, and oh. we bring live music. Uh, we bring drums, guitar, bass, piano, How and vocals. Fun. And we get the kids who most of them can't get up. Right. They're in wheelchairs or um, severely handicapped kids. But you can tell once the music starts. Oh, that gives me um, Yeah, it's really mm-hmm. cool. So if you get a chance, go to the AMP website and check it out. I think you had something on Facebook about it. it yeah, they have an AMP page. Um, actually, tomorrow um, I'm meeting them down at the Saginaw Rotary Club because our we did a thing called Saginaw on Stage, which mm-hmm. I didn't appear at because I was sick. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it's such a bummer. Oh, I saw that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but we had, uh, we had like 17 songwriters mm-hmm. in a room. And uh, I had just come back from Florida, and I had uh, bronchitis and the flu and all that, so I didn't get to go. But um, it was one of the rooms um, for Saginaw on Stage, which is a fundraiser, and they're donating uh, some of the funds from that Saginaw on Stage to the AMP program. Oh, yeah. that's so nice. Yeah. So it's, it's community um, involvement helping to support it. It's a, it's a nonprofit thing. So. That's excellent. You know, we... Um we do some fundraising things every now and then. That would be a fun thing for us to do, mm-hmm. to do it for that. That's that's really good. Thank you for doing that. You're See, and that's what I love about you guys. Look at you. You all do such really good things for the community to, besides that. I mean, you're teaching, and Sarah, and you're... you're I mean, what a good role model and you are for those young ones, and your little girl, too. And she teaches, uh, what's the... Fitness. Fitness. Yes. Kick right, at shooting music. Music. right, right. Well, that's music, too. You know, I, uh, that's another avenue of, that I use music, is through my fitness. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's so cool. And Jen, from Girls on the Run, is that how we met... It is, yeah. You, you, I, we connected by phone at some point, and you've been coaching now for I think four or five years. Yes, with us. So yeah, I love that huh. that way. 
Yes, it's time goes so fast, no, it doesn't does. it? It's, it, does. it amazes me. That's how your dad felt on his birthday yeah. too. I bet. <laughs> he did.